All right, so today we're going to be talking about properties and attributes within HTML. So here I have a paragraph, very simple paragraph, but I've got a whole bunch of attributes that I've added here. So in HTML, these are called attributes. So I have an ID, I've got a title, ID, everybody knows title, it's the mouse over text, what you see when you hold your mouse over something. Class attaches to CSS. If you're going to come up with your own properties, then you're supposed to append data and a hyphen in front of them. Then you can put whatever value you want inside of here, any primitive value you want. And here I have an invalid property. So ABC is not part of the spec. It's not something that's supposed to be there, not something we're allowed. This would fail validation for HTML. So we're going to look at all these different parts and in JavaScript, how to access them as if they are properties and or attributes. All right, so I have my script here. I'm going to target this paragraph so I can look at all the different parts. In the first one, we're going to look at ID and title. So let's start with properties. With P, that's my variable that refers to the paragraph, I can do this. I can say P.ID. That is a property. So when I try to write this one out, if I log this and then I log P.title, I'm talking about these two values, but I'm using the property ID and the property title to access them. And in my page in the browser here, here's my script running out, um, being written out. So ID title, that's my group right here. And I've got those two properties. There's the values being displayed. One and hello. Nothing very surprising there. Now, if I want to treat them as attributes, and I want to directly look into the HTML and say, hey, give me the value of the attribute. This is how we do that. So I can do the ID, I can do the title, and we get those two values. And not surprisingly, it comes up as the exact same thing. So these two were properties, these two were attributes. So why does this matter? Well, it matters because when the DOM creates all these elements. So it's creating paragraphs and divs and body tags and all these different ones. There are very specific properties that are created to go with it. Get attribute allows you to drill down into the HTML and read stuff. So for my ABC, if I said p.get attribute ABC, I want to get that one. There it is. As an attribute, I can read directly from the HTML but there is no property ABC. This is not a valid thing. It's not part of the standard. So I'm going to say um, p.abc, trying to get a property called that. Undefined, there is no property called ABC in the standard. If you want to come up with your own, you have to do this, data-prop. If I do that, if I do data-prop, then we can do this. We can say log p.getAttribute. So we're reading directly from the HTML. And I'm going to say, hey, I want the thing called data prop. If I want to read the property, then there's a special reserved way of doing that. There is data set is this special property and it holds all of the properties or all the attributes in here that start with a data and a hyphen. So dataset.prop will give me this value. And that is defined in the standard. You can do this. So you can say dataset.prop. That is going to get the actual value. So here we are, some value, some value, as an attribute and as a property. So there we have it. And then class, this is another one of those unusual cases. I have an attribute called class, so we can say, hey, I want to go p dot get attribute class. Fine, that's going to work. There it is. Class is ABC. If we look back in our HTML, class ABC, sure enough, that's what it was. I can call it something else. We can call it Fred. There's Fred. So we're getting this string from inside of the attribute in the HTML that's called class. There is no property though called class. I cannot do this. I cannot say p.class because class is a reserved word in JavaScript. So to access the value, they came up with a property called class name. 
and you will find this with some properties. They don't have the exact same property name as they do attribute name. We have two different names here. The attribute is called class, but the property is called class name. But they give us the same value. And then additionally, in JavaScript, beyond class name, there's also class list. And you can have methods on here, add, remove, toggle, has, I want to know, hey, does it have the class name Fred? So we've got additional methods. There we go. Contains is the proper method. So true, yes, it does contain the value Fred. And the reason it has these methods is that class list turns whatever you've written here it turns it from a string into a DOM token list. So we've got Fred and Charlie and Simon and Jennifer, you know, whatever properties that we want to use, whatever values that we want to put inside of here, these are DOM tokens. So we have four different values. Get attribute class gives us this. Class name, the property, gives us the whole string. But then the individual things, if we want to look at the individual ones and say, hey, does it contain something called Fred? Yes. What about Jennifer? Yes, it's got Jennifer. What about Steve? Does it have one called Steve? False. No, it doesn't. So the class list property right here, the class list property contains a bunch of methods. Class name just gives us the same string as this. So we have attributes and we have properties. Attributes are the things that are in your HTML. We have the get attribute and set attribute method. If you want to update it, we can say set attribute, if you could spell it. <laughs> and you can pass in whatever the name is, whatever the value is to update the value that's in the HTML. If a property exists, like here, we can update this. We can say p.title equals the new value, whatever we want it to be. So as long as the property exists, but only valid HTML ones, ones that are part of the standard, those are the only ones that there will be properties that exist to go alongside of the attributes. All right, so I hope that makes sense. If you're looking for a copy of this code, you'll find it linked to uh, down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.